You know that feeling when you wake up and you think, I really need just to chat to a friend. And we sometimes think, who are our friends anymore? Do you know that feeling? I sometimes get that feeling and I wake up and I think, who are my friends? Because there's so many people for so long that I haven't been in touch with. You know, we've got friends we've known a long time that we can pick up where we left off. But there are days you wake up and we get ourselves in a hole. And we think, who can I call? But sometimes I had that thought and I went and called somebody that I met once on the other side of the world in Australia because we have a connection. And I'm gonna call her again today. So let's get in, Mia Friedman. Oh, she's there. She's there. Um, oh, Donnie, you really made a fun effort. Now I've got to go and do something immediately. You're in sunglasses. I mean, you know, let me just let me just do that. <laughs> Look at you. Look, Look at you. I What's on the bottom half? Mia? What? For two weeks. So you've gone insane, haven't you? Yeah. Can I just say I love the glasses? Show I've you my become Iris app, Phil. You've become Iris Apfel. I know, but they're not big enough. I, I mean, they've got to be 10 them. times this size, but look. they are so cool. Don't we love that? I found, look, I found this on Amazon. It's my sunglass oh, tower. Let me see. Oh, I like that but it's very just, much. I mean, it's so good because you like organization and they were on Amazon. Yes, and then you know how you can sometimes get really cheap drawers and these ones slide. Oh, I like that. Isn't that good? Look what I, Do you like that? Look what I've got for my earrings. Let me see what you've done with your earrings, because storage is... Oh, my God. You, you're like Lila now. That's like a sweet shop. Go closer in again. Let me see it. And where is it from? It's from a lady startup called Bon Maxi, and she makes these. She's obsessed with earring storage. It's so clever. Can I see how big those earrings are? Because I can never store my big earrings. Okay, so my big earrings are bit, like they're big. What's good is that you don't have to faff around. Like you can adjust the length of these and have as many or as few as you want. See? <gasps> oh, Mia, no, I know. that's just divine. Mia, this is what I'm doing right now. And it just, it's just like, I don't see everything out. I mean, I see the colors. Oh, okay. I, that's what I had to do. And I just wasn't I seeing it. I had mine in cutlery drawers and it drove me yeah. absolutely crazy. And what yeah. I love about these is that you can just pop them on. You don't have to like poke them through the holes and then fiddle around with the backs. Everyone <laughs> is really obsessed with them who doesn't know them already. Are they, is it Bon Maxi? Yes, it's got Bon here. Maxi. I'll, I'll show you this here. Bon Maxi. Speaking before you came on saying, I am basically Trini No Friends. I'm Trini No Friends. Nobody calls me, Mia. People yeah, don't like call too. that much. Do people call you? No. But I don't like I don't like the phone particularly this whole last year actually I've been um, texting madly and that's kind of unsatisfying like it yeah, gives you a not quick hit of communication but it's not the same as like when you and I catch up on a live it's yeah. different to texting you know it's so different and I think that. I also get in my, I mean, this is high class problems, all right, because, you know, but, but now that we have sort of, I have half my tribe of friends on WhatsApp religiously who hate message. Yeah. And I have half my friends on message who hate WhatsApp. So I have to look at two things to see. I know. That. So people do text me quite a lot, but I just, I don't know. I miss a phone call. Like in the office, Mia, this is like so whingy. I know it's awfully whingy, but we have Slack as an internal communication. And then we have emails and I prefer emails. Yes, so do we. My whole company do Slack. But I really prefer more than anything picking up the phone and just saying, hey, and then resolving it in a couple of minutes because mm -hmm. I'm used to people in the office and then we'll have a chat and it will get done instead of nine emails. But I think that's because you're extroverted because some people are like, we, we have a lot, of, yeah. a lot of young women and a lot of introverted people who yeah. work at Mamma Mia and they don't like talking. So even our editorial team will talk on Slack instead of talking to the person across the desk. What do we think about that? You know, I think that I'm quite, I'm quite like that in that people have just stopped. What it does is that it divorces communication from having to see someone's facial expressions and read them and know if you've maybe upset but them. isn't that like, important a lot of room yes that's what i mean so i've had a conversation over slack and someone will have to say to me don't do that because someone might think you're mad yeah. particularly when you're the boss someone might think you're mad someone might think because you don't have the time yeah, of voice because sometimes and, also yeah. on a call i'll be hi how are you and i'll be do the niceties and on communication i'll just be ba -ba bum and then you're right. It's a very important thing that we can forget we're the boss when we don't think that somebody would think, oh, it's a tough one. Yes. It is true. a tough one. Can I just draw you, you back? You can draw to me back business. to my business. 
since we last spoke, you've launched we have quite That's a lot so of new cute. things. What have you got? Oh, I've got Chance and Dawn and Janita and Sharon and I Reem. I mean, Vision. can I just say Reem? is going to be also your good friend. Can I tell you the trick of Reem too? Because you know how we secretly can put flush Please. blush on our lip. I'm going to do that with yeah. a bit of my coat. Do you commit to yourself to, for example, do you call girlfriends? It's like if you're not going out for dinner to say tonight's my girlfriend night. So you actually have the rhythm you would have if you were able to go out reason that I don't is because I mean I often text this is what's interesting because I'm yeah. on zoom calls all day like a lot of zoom yeah. calls all day and making social content and stuff so by the time the night comes out it feels somehow different if I was going like I'd go out for dinner with a girlfriend but somehow getting on a zoom call or a phone call just feels like too much work it de you know what I sometimes think the way my daughter does it is good so she's sort of, you know, she'll just have the phone in the kitchen as she's making dinner and she makes it just as if you're in the yeah. kitchen chatting and then, you know, her friends go off to go to the loo or go off to, you know, do something, but just like the, the phone lines open and it's not having to have that focus oh, I like conversation. That. So I've sort of done that. So it's not that Zoom where you have to give them all your attention. It's what you would be with the person normally when yeah. you might be in the kitchen cooking them supper and you're getting the milk out, doing all the stuff, and you're listening to their conversation, but you're not having to be. So maybe that yeah. is a way to think about it. When I first saw my girlfriends in person um, and we could go out to dinner, I found that I'd forgotten how to be in person and have a person-to-person -person conversation. I kept interrupting, yeah. which I do anyway, but... I'd almost, because you know how texting becomes like, it's not a conversation, it's a series of monologues. Yes, yeah, it is a series of monologues. And I just find that's, I mean, lots of people are saying on, you know, it's an age thing, so true. Um, oldies, phone, younger people prefer no face or voice contact. I'm introverted and I much prefer texting. I don't like talking on the phone. I've got to show you my suit because last time I saw you, I was wearing that Zimmerman oh, you were, shorts yes. and top and you didn't like it. I haven't been wearing okay. many sequins lately, but I'm wearing a, su a sequin suit today. A bit like yeah, a, like a track that. suit, but sequins. I love that. Really like nice. slouchy. Yeah, it's from my yeah. friend Vanessa. South, south of the border, border means where? No, Cronulla. Oh, south of the border. Sydney. South did of the. Say south of the border. Yeah, I know. It's just you did, didn't you? I south know. Yeah, border. south of the border. And then I've got this cami on from Joey the label because I just and then I'm I've got my pink Connie's on. I've got oh, you have got my pink Converse. I like. I mean, you're tripleting the the sequin, which I like. The the you know the. The trousers look like you yeah. could have a willy inside. You know, it's that kind of slouchy moment. I know. I do, I have, I do love a, an MC Hammer. Who catch a catch? Pants. I'm going to show you my latest sequin because we always get changed and do yes. this. Because I wasn't sure if I would wear them as yeah, a yeah, high-waisted yeah, Simon Cowell moment or not. So maybe you can give me your opinion. Okay. And I've yeah. done my back in, so I'm going to get up like an old lady. Show me. Yeah. So I had... I'm going to show, yeah. this is like the subtlety of life, all right? This is H&M, and I bought this with two pairs of trousers because they're always bad on sizing. And can we please talk afterwards about Zara sizing? I want to have a chat with all your Aussies. But stay oh. with H&M for the moment. A 38 oh, top, nice, yeah. expensive-looking bit of something. Bloody hell, it's so tricky when we're on a thing and you can't see full body, isn't it? Yeah, okay. it is. So it's this, really, really hard. I can still can see. Can you see, see how low the crutch is? Oh, nice. Okay, and the trousers are yes. that weird length, which is yes. not a crop or anything. It's like that. So oh, I bought yes, another yes, pair, yes. and I took them up, and I think the crop, you do a crop, don't you? I do like a crop, because I've also got a long torso. And do you see the difference in the silhouette? Oh, yes. And I really That's pulled better. them up. Yeah, I like that. Do you like, you don't do a drop crotch. Well, the much, thing is, I like one, but I don't know if it's flattering. But do you but not feel, like Mia? I mean, I'm just going to be really candid here as one friend to another. Those aren't that dropped, are they? Those, yeah, stand on there. No, these aren't dropped. These are, these are, this is just another suit. I think the layering's nice, but I would tuck in a little bit of the camisole at the front. You know, just a little bit. Um, yeah, just a tuck. Yes, yes. 100%. Give yourself your bloody weight. The half tuck. Yeah, so much better. Yeah. Yeah, it's a very nice. Agree. 
The half tuck, the Trini it's half really, tuck I always um, call thank it. You, darling. It's a really good colour. Yeah, I love the navy. Can I just say what Can happened I? for those of you who don't know Mia? Mia has a phenomenal business in Australia, <laughs> which is laugh. a company which is Mama Mia, and she has an amazing podcast and lots of things, building a, a media empire. But I went to do a interview with Mia when I went to Australia. I um yeah, fuck. I went in this little room where you do your podcast, and I remember well, I'd been rushing, rushing, rushing like for ten days. And it was that moment where I just stopped and you caught me at a moment and it was a very emotional moment. And we had such an emotional exchange. And I remember leaving this little cocoon of this room with a reset. It was just fabulous. It was just very special and very rare. That's all. Yes. And then we were, we were crying and we were laughing. <laughs> so this is the most trivial thing Please. I can talk about, my hair. So I had finally gone to my hairdresser and gone to that lovely sort of warm, I went to the hairdresser and maybe too blonde and then pulled it back and it was perfect. And I was so happy with that lovely colour. Yeah. And my, you know, my man who cuts my hair said, Trini, it's only going to last a few weeks and then you'll need to put a toner on. Put a toner on yesterday and I've gone to brown. The toner just took everything out. You've gone took really all dark. the colour, all my lights out. I thought it was the light and I've gone quite... I'm I've gone quite light. My hairdresser calls it sparkly I love brunette. your colour and I'm thinking... Jesus Christ, this is like I've gone some flat, horrible colour. It's really, Thank it's you. like overnight I went, I did a, I did a toner yesterday and I must have left it on too long or something, but I've lost all the definition in my hair, which I spent quite a lot of money putting in. Why did you have to do something at home? Why, why can I not go into the salon? Oh, no time. It takes so much right. time doing like that. And I just now, did right? it at home. And Greg was coming to give me a blow dry for a shoot totally and he put better. it on and I just think, Where's that lovely, yeah. all that money I paid for has just gone into a, it really like on the camera too, it's very dark. It's very dark. I want to ask you about what it was like to go to Iceland and just, it was like, were you in shock at, at the, you've been in that room for a year it was and suddenly. Unbelievable to go somewhere that I'd always wanted to go to anyway. And to be like, to go to an airport, to get on a plane, to land, you know, just to be in yes. another country, but it was breathtaking. Iceland was breathtaking. And it wasn't, it wasn't a holiday. I didn't have a moment of relaxation, yeah, no. which I really still need a lot. But it was the, yeah. one of the biggest experiences in my life because you saw this incredible country. You saw it from when the lava you know, was still running to you know, volcanoes that have become mountains that have become covered in snow. And you saw the rawness, you know, it's very, I mean, you can get that a little bit in Australia, that sort of barrenness, but you really felt that. And the skiing was incredible, but it was very, you know, a friend of mine who was on it hurt her knee quite badly and she came back, she had to have an operation and I hurt my knee a bit. So I came back and for three weeks, I couldn't really do anything. So that can ebb away at your yeah. amazement, but it didn't actually, because yeah. I still think that was so incredible. So I'd recommend it to anyone. It's like nowhere else. It's Tell so me great. something, um, your lip, what are you wearing? Um, you, what... I'm wearing, I've got some Sharon. Very nice. Have you had Katie? Yeah. It's a sheer shimmer. I was just about to go there. It's I a think sheer I shimmer have. here. Oh, I like your accent. You do that quite well. I sometimes go to South Africa, but then I can come back to Australia. Trini, <laughs> how are you? <laughs> it's very bad when I do it wrong. No, I'm now got, you see, now I've gone suddenly to South Africa. Can't do it. Yeah, South Africans are very different accents. But South African men, men are very tall. Tall. That was right. Then I've now gone to. Yeah. My, my father's, father's from, from South, South Africa. Africa. I didn't my father's know that. from South Africa, man. Yeah. He's so Afrikaans. Jobber. Afrikaans. And Mafeking. I'm just trying to get the accent right. Can you tell yeah, me no, the difference okay. between a, a Sydney accent and a Melbourne yeah. accent? Okay. A Perth accent Not really. and a Sydney accent? No. Adelaide is quite. A, a strong accent but you can't really tell you can tell often what they're wearing like melbourne people no melbourne people wear sequins. black melbourne people would be wearing an interesting, black glasses. And interesting glasses i do i did find when i went to melbourne yeah. that i felt it was a little bit smarter than sydney but in a more conservative way and sydney is just more colorful in a more relaxed way uh, yeah and sydney's tits out like sydney's tits extroverted out. you think melbourne's tits in yeah Tits in in Melbourne, tits out in tits out in Sydney. Sydney is about showing a lot of skin, oh, like not yeah. me, but and not everyone, of course. But just in general, typical Sydney dressing is more flashy and more yeah. showing more skin and more leg and more, you know, yeah. kind of look at me. 
in a way. Whereas Melbourne is very, very chic. I'm very intimidated by Melbourne. Ocean Sun, it so says stylish. there is a Melbourneian accent. And that Adelaide has a refined oh. English accent. Yeah, Adelaideans sometimes sound New like Zealand. New Zealand. You just did something there and I'm trying to New Zealand. Yeah, they do. New Zealand. I love this. New Zealand. New Zealand. New um, Zealand. I was also talking to a, a another um, female founder yeah. who is direct to consumer, and she said that when you sell through a retail outlet, often they'll want to put the price up and margins yeah. and all of that. So when you sell direct to consumer, you're able to keep the price lower and control yeah. it better and pass any savings on. To well, the, the thing is, when well, lots of people make things, um, and they think I want to sell it for this. So let me find ingredients that will allow me to sell it for this price. Whereas I don't think like that. What I do is I think I want, you know, like when I did de-stress, okay, I thought I want to make a product that will remove stress from your face. I know neofrolene is a phenomenal complex to do that. I want to put in 10%, not 2%. So that's going to cost me more. And I want to put in vitamin C and other things. And now what's the price? So uh, if I was selling in retail, I probably couldn't do that so easily, Mia. But I do want to think of, yeah, I, yeah, I probably exactly. couldn't do that so easily because I have more freedom around being able to set the price. And, you know, some places like Macro are like a 50, 60 percent margin. And, and so that wouldn't work for our business because we haven't built in that, you know. And you, it's true. You don't want, you know, I, I, I think you and I both know that there are perhaps some products out there which are very much marketing. And so I feel that the future should be that they are actually, you know, proper functional active levels of ingredients and they actually can deliver what you suggest they deliver. And I don't, you know, when I look at formulations and I look at people who might have less than 1% of active ingredients and I'm like slightly, you know, conning there. So I just, it's just a thing with our business and MBD that we, that's the way we, we develop a formula. So um, and it's also, the other thing is too, like, we're not big enough to do this anyway, but if you're a really big brand, you sort of think, oh, we're doing brows. So let's think of nine different ways we can sell a woman brows. Okay. And let's just yes. really, really d yes. dive down into that brow element. And I think what we do is we think, I probably still think this, um, and MBD execute on it, but I'm like, what do I think I still need? And what would I like to see done differently? And we start with that. And then that becomes mm. a product. And then it doesn't mean, hey, we've now we should do six things in that territory. It could be that we think that's all you need from us as a brand. Let's now go into another category. So it's just a different way of thought. Yeah. How have you had to change the way you work with your team? Because at, at 100, yeah. you oh can know God, everyone so who works for you. At 180, you can't. And some of them have never even been into the office. I what know. I do, like I went in yesterday and... And some of my team might be watching this, but this is what I do. And I'm very transparent with them. So I call Louise first and I say, is there anyone new in the office today? And I say, where are they, where are they sitting? Yeah. What's their name? And what's their hair color? Because my ability to have cognitive recognition from a Zoom to real life is very difficult. I don't have good cognitive recognition. So, uh -huh. you know, I was meeting who's on the call now. Faith is on the call now. Okay. Here's Faith. <laughs> um, and, um, so I met Faith for the first time this week, but Louise told me where she was sitting because my cognitive brain had to translate what I'd, how I'd seen Faith on the Zoom to Faith in real life. Faith, are you hearing yeah, this? Yeah, right. Yeah, that yeah she's so funny to know the behind the scenes. It's good to know the behind the scenes because Faith was one of the girls in the room and she's on the call in case we missed some questions. So that's, that's how I do it. And imagine if Faith had just said, it's not I Faith, know, that's like, my name's Joanna. You know what, Susanna, <laughs> when Susanna and I worked together, right? Susanna was always very good at names and I was not that great. So when we had a new crew and the crew was always like 120 people, she'd get to know a lot of them. And in the end, I just heard what she called them and I carried on. But what I hadn't realized after one crew is that she chosen all the wrong names for them. <laughs> <laughs> they polite, you know, they felt too polite to say, actually, I'm not Michael, I'm Terry. But she'd done it with like six members of the crew and the joke on set was like, Confidence. how many more could she get wrong? And then Trini gets them wrong too. And I was like, oh my God. Yeah. That was so embarrassing. <laughs> it's the people that say names with such Yeah, and you just think, oh, they definitely know it. Let me call it too. <sighs> yeah.
But I'm terrible. I'm so terrible with names. I've been at functions and introduced myself to someone. Like there'll be a group of people and there'll be someone from Mamma Mia and I'll just go, oh, hi, and I've introduced myself. And one of them will say, oh, I, I work at Okay, Mama. now that's, that's a killer. That <laughs> is a killer. I love that. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> it's do, you, do you sort of give yourself an allowance? Do you like say to your team, because they're generally all much younger than you and you could be heading for memory loss at any stage of your life. Do you just say to them, you know, darlings, now. I might not remember your name, but it does mean I don't care. Or do you, what do you do? No, I do. And I had to say also last, because we haven't had nearly as many new starters as you, but we've had some. And so I've had to say, hey, when someone new starts in your department, please can you come and introduce them to me? Because it's awkward if I see them in the kitchen. And sometimes I can't remember, yeah. have I met them before? Have I not met them before? Because everyone just looks impossibly young and impossibly lovely to me. I often just don't know. Like, I'm just not good with remembering that yeah. stuff. I'm really vague. I decided that when we do have a get-together, because we were going to do this party for the office and be in, in, in the park, but now it's difficult to do it. But I said, when we all get together, I want everyone to have a name badge with where they work. You know, just because it's like, yeah, you know, it is very different on a screen to in person. And I think that, you know, if it's in your team, you're going to know them. But when you work across the business... It's very, it is very difficult. So I think I maxed out at sort of 90 people and I've sort of learned probably yeah. another 20, but I think there's probably 30 people and, you know, like eight people joined this week. All right. So that's like a third of them. You know, I haven't had enough meetings with that. I remember them. So people I'm with every day, Mia, I remember, of course I do, but people who maybe I see once a week in a meeting or we do a... <laughs> We do a tech showcase. Oh, yeah. Have you done a tech showcase? Okay. A tech showcase. Oh, this is something where a tech showcase is when the tech team presents all the work they've done that week and they present and there's different groups. All right. And so they present what they've done. So it's quite technical. And so there was a lovely man last week and I wish I could remember his name. And he was talking all about how he had had to change our system to enable us to include tax taxes in US shipping. So it was easy. All right. And he loved what he had this project he'd done. And he spent 10 minutes talking about this and, <laughs> and the details and the US taxes thing. And I was like, there thinking, <laughs> I know I need to know this stuff. But all right, I know I need to know this stuff. I know I need to sound informed. But, but really? yeah, so then, so then, um, yeah, you know, it was just sort of that when it's that far removed from you know, if it's anyone in MPD or marketing, it's very close to what I'm doing every day. And that's not actually so close to what I'm doing every day, but it's really important for the business and they're really key. And yeah, yeah. Agree. anyway. I mean, do you think, Mia, that you know how to do your eye makeup? Well, I've, uh, I've yeah. learned a lot by watching you and watching yeah. Ray, you and Ray. I find that, that that's just a format that I can really... Um, it's yeah. just changed the way I do it. Yeah. And also using creams of instead of, of... But I can um, still learn. Of powders because you don't, it's yeah. just easier. Okay, what's your favourite fragrance? Oh, I've got a, um, like a, I don't even know what it's called. It's just, I'm, I'm in a fragrance slut. Are I'm you not, a fragrance slut? I don't slut? like... Can um, I introduce you to a really nice fragrance? Yeah. Hang on. The two I love. In fact, I found a really old friend. I'm going to show you three I love. Subtle Energies, which is Australian. They have a room spray. Which is amazing oh. because oh, I have to show you, Mia, because it's really incredible. Ah, I've done my back in, sorry. So, you know, if you are, well, not when you're in the office, because you're obviously not in the bloody office, but you know, when you feel who's around me, it's a bit weird. You just yeah. go like this. And it's got Ooh. this. It's really interesting, the smell, because the smell is slightly. What's the stuff you have put on your tooth at the dentist? Cloves. Cloves. Fluoride. Cloves. Do you remember old fashioned? You're oh, not that clothes. old, but I used to have clothes yeah. when I had toothache. My grandmother gave it to me. But anyway, this is actually a hand sanitizer. I've got this totally wrong, but there is one, Subtle Energies, which is a rum do gooder, but it smells good. So I love that. Then Woody Fig. This yeah. is Australian, this guy. Do you know him? Yes, I went and looked him up yeah. because I saw you say one on a, on a, on a thing and I was going to order it, it is, and then I forgot. It's Woody Fig. It's like the most complex fig. It's so beautiful. He's a bit like a, a vintner. A vintner? 
a wine yard owner, a wine yard owner, oh, yeah, a vine yeah. yard owner. Yeah. So he sort yeah. of like writes me essays about it's getting ready in the barrels. It's it's soon be ready. You know, I'll send it over. And so it's kind of I oh, love his obsession. So I think he's interesting. This is what my That's father used to wear: Blenheim bouquet from Penhaligons. It's a man's aftershave oh. with citrus. That's nice. And then this is from Ilya, and it's called Beat the Blues Room Spray. So when you're feeling flat. Oh, I like that. I love Ilya. And I didn't know that. It didn't really know like, it helps clear an atmosphere and create a peaceful and uplifting space. And it's quite sweet, like a lot of jasmine, but it's very nice, that one. Very nice. I'm now just so overwhelmed. I feel you're in the room with me. Mia, I really, I, I hope one day, and I mean, like, you've... probably in two years, but if I get a, if I get a hankering one night, I might just text you again, because the other day, I was, I started off the conversation, you know, just by just saying, me. sometimes we can feel lonely and alone, and I was feeling a bit unsettled, yeah. and I, I didn't want to call anyone in London, but I thought, yeah. let me do a live with Mia, that came in my mind. No, I've missed you. I was so looking forward to catching up. It's so funny that people like are like remember us, and it's like, oh yeah, I forgot that there's people. Who yeah, are I know. Also well, I, we don't want to ignore them. Because I just love our. It's all up. about having a conversation, and we no, are looking, we mustn't. Yeah. That they they do need to know about Zara size. Yeah, Zara size. We were going to talk about Zara size. Uh, yeah. Adam, so Adam, I Adam, I had a thing because I really I mean Mia it got to me and Chloe and I were at the office a few weeks ago and we she put on an X. XL jumpsuit and it couldn't go up her I thigh. Saw. And she's a 16, 18, which in Australia is a 14, 16, I think. And I was just like, yes. it really offended me. And I, because I saw, and Chloe has so much body confidence and she's really worked on her body confidence. Yeah. And it just, it upset me. Yeah. So I then just thought, let me not use them for a bit. And then also, whenever I looked on the website, everything looked like it was for 12 year olds, to be honest. I felt. It was badly made. I felt everything was jeans and a t-shirt, jeans and a t-shirt. There was no kind of fun, funky, fabulous things. Yeah. So I then just thought, I'm not going to Special buy it for a bit. And so I didn't for a month. And then I went in the, in the sale on Saturday with Lila because, you know, she likes Zara. And there were some fun things in the sale. And it is actually, because it has a whole year of clothing or a year and a half, this instance, Lila got like a faux leather blazer for 40 quid and, you know, nice stuff. But it just offends me. And I went up to this woman I sort of vaguely know the store in Chelsea. And I went up to the woman and they're sweet because sometimes I've gone in there early to film what's in and they've let me in early. But I just said to her, do they understand the sizing frustration? Do they get that, do you think? She said, oh, it all comes from Spain, right. blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, but do they not see it? Because 46% of British women in, in the UK are above a size, six, size 16. And, you know, they're not want, they would like to shop at Zara. So it's, it's not like also... Yeah. You know, when you're an online brand, you can really control. There's two things. You can control your order numbers. So they could just say, okay, maybe it doesn't sell well. Or they don't, you know, they don't take a punt on it. But they could order less. But they could still order in those sizes. And then there's a thing about how you size, Mia. Because does Chloe want to feel she's identified and labeled size. as an XXL? Fucking hell no. That doesn't fit so, her. So there is, yeah. you know, I just think there's a lot of work to be done on that. No, I mean, in Australia, we get the R yeah, and Zara do. from yeah. all over the world. They, like, send their shit yeah. to Australia. It's, t it's terrible. So here it's not. But, you know, I, I know that you, you're always so conscious, which is wonderful, about having something that your tribers can also buy when they see you, no matter where they are in the world. But I think also remember that it's about inspiration. Like, your Serena Butte, which I absolutely love, like, I can't get that, but it's made me think... I also can't afford that. But it's made me think I could find, yeah. you know, somewhere else that I would never have thought of wearing yes, a fluorescent exactly. orange Yeah, uh, Yeah, and I don't, suit, you know, you when know? people say sometimes because, you know, somebody might catch you one day and it's the first time that they've watched me and they think, oh, it's so expensive and un unachievable. But, you know, a tremendous amount yeah, of no. what I do is about what can you do with your own wardrobe. So Closet Commercials to me is that. What can you do in your own wardrobe? What can you, you 100%. know, change? And... I think I would love to be doing more slow fashion. Although, can I just show you what I did, Mia? You might not like them, but I have to show you. I haven't shown anyone yet, but it's like, I'm gonna pretend now that nobody else is watching because I have to show you my guilty, huge No one's watching. All right. Do you know The Vampire's Wife? Yes. Hold a second, because I went to a sample sale. One second. Oh my God, I'm so excited to show you. 
I just always felt yes. it was like my daughter and not my daughter in law, but Charles's daughter wears it a bit and looks amazing. And then I'd seen it worn on a lot of people too much. And I thought, is it still kind of cool? But they are. And everything was a size. I can't remember Princess Catherine everything wearing Everything was a size it one too time. small. So I had a Susanna make a little insert. And you, you can't tell where she's made it. Okay. This is the first one. Let me see. Oh. <gasps> Oh, wow. Wow. And, uh, that is delicious. Is that like a rose? Like the most beautiful kind of rose gold. A... So I got that, but I got it. It's I mean, like they're usually dawn. 1,900 pounds. I got it for 220 pounds. <gasps> Almost I, free. And then I got that Almost one. free. <gasps> yeah. Is that the same, but in green? And then I got that Oh, one. that's delicious. <gasps> oh, my God. Hold on, one more. One more. These mad. are just next level. I went so mad. But my favorite one, which I wore yesterday, it's like, this is the other thing. Because I got them for 90% off, I thought to myself, I want to wear it on a Saturday because these things would normally stay in my cupboard. So I've made a decision to wear all my really nice dresses one yeah. day off the next, dressed down. But this one. I love that. With that sleeve. Yes, I yeah. saw that you wore that on the weekend. And it's so beautiful. it's just, I've got to say, they made me so happy. That's like wear your best every day to feel your best. And I just think they stay in there and they're the most you spent on anything True. and we wear them the least. So it's like my mantra. I'm going to do that every single day. Darling, I've got to go to the next meeting. I'm going to have my takeaway in my sequin Go down to it and then have your girlfriend on a Zoom, but just like do your own thing or watch a telly show together as if, you know, just yeah, try, really like try that kind of, of that. not having to look at the screen, but be there. I love those glasses. Can you also send me the information on those glasses? So nice to talk to you. I love you. This has been restorative. And the most me fun too. I've had so week, much, Mia. Not longer. Biggest kisses. Bye, darling. I love you. Bye. 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 Bye.